Welcome back everyone, Mike McConville here, Stratford, Ontario, Canada. got a special treat for you today. This is a VOS 1958 R9 Les Paul Standard. Absolutely gorgeous instrument. You can count on it that this was dressed with a CNC machine. Uh, they did an exceptional job, but they missed a couple of parts. There's this high spot here, and a high spot here. And another high spot over here, right here. So that's pretty good. One, two, three, three spots they missed. We will get that on the GPS unit, not a problem. We have a customer that just ordered two GPS units and an XLT unit, and he owns one of these CNC machines. So he said he was going to use the tech deck for, for pre and post CNC work. Nice. Paul, of course, we're getting compensated nut. We're taking out the polypropylene nut and putting in a Corian compensated nut. Okay, so we're going to lose these 10 to 46 strings, step it up to 11 to 48, and then gently heat up that, that plastic nut and get our compensated nut going. Now it's got the reverse tailpiece on there. I'm not too sure whether that's necessary or not. We'll see as we get into the job. So we're going to take a look at this uh, tailpiece and see whether we need to do a wraparound or not. There's certainly lots of clearance here in the casting. I just wanted you to see this last string before I took these all off. I'm going to be stringing it without the wraparound and see how much clearance we get on the back of that casting. Now this is the 11 to 48 strings. We're stepping it up. Stepping it up and tuning it down. We're definitely going to take care of this slop in the uh, bridge machining. These are tight into the body, no issue there. So the issue really is the, the inside diameter of the holes in the cast bridge are just way too sloppy on those posts. You hit that with your palm, you'll knock your intonation out. So we're going to take care of that. Just set that aside for now. We well, with the next set on this guitar, we definitely need to remove that pickup to be able to get those high spots and dress along the trajectory of the string path. So I had scored through the lacquer with a hot razor knife and look at how clean we got that out. This is the actual channel, not a micro speck of wood. And this is the nut. The ends, the leading face, and the floor. So this is the thing about those polypropylene nuts. Nothing sticks to it. So you can see the little film of glue along the end of the fingerboard. Okay, now that we've got a flawless extraction of that original nut, I adjusted that truss rod just enough to put the neck exactly where it was with the strings tuned to concert pitch. Tend we've got this spot here, this spot here, and this spot. So not a big deal. Actually, this came out pretty nice, uh, but uh, once again, Correcting what the CNC machine missed. One, two, three spots. So we're ready to do this dress, uh, and then we'll recrown and polish them end to end, and then we're on to our compensated nut. This is our 11 to 48 strings at E flat. Now, I've been around the block on this enough times that I've already got that roughed in. I got a pretty good idea where this is going to end up. So the frets are dressed. This has been buffed and polished, and we're ready to put the pickup back in, throw the strings on 
and get on with this compensated nut. It's funny how this whole road-worn thing has uh, developed you know, over the years. The fender-worn look is like they've dragged the guitar down a gravel road behind a pickup truck or something. Gibson's a little bit more subtle about it. They've rusted the screws. They've rusted the uh, tailpiece post. They've gone with the nitrocellulose lacquer and it's hand rubbed. So if you look at it closely, you can actually see rub marks in this. So I think with Gibson, they they do distress it, but they don't go to quite the extent that Fender goes to. We're going to come in tight here and I'm going to give you the wrap up. There's a bunch of different things we need to discuss. That I needed to cut into the body of the nut beyond the end of the fingerboard to get all of these strings to intonate perfectly. So here's one last look at this uh, Les Paul Studio Compensated Nut 10 to 46 strings concert pitch uh, before I smooth this out. And this is our 10 to 46 at concert pitch compensated nut for the Les Paul Studio. Okay, let's start with the tailpiece. First of all, you saw in the beginning of the video that the strings were wrapped around verse wrap. There's a couple of issues with that. These original tailpieces are actually aluminum. They're not the nickel plated brass. They're very light. Part of the deal with these old vintage instruments. The problem with a wrap around is these strings, if you wrap around, they will cut through that aluminum like a cheese cutter. So if you really insist on doing that, put your original tailpiece aside and get a disposable one because you will destroy it eventually with the strings. There's lots of examples where a wraparound is a good idea. This isn't one of them. This tailpiece is right tight to the body and we still have clearance on both outside strings. We are not deflecting off the casting on the back of the bridge. You'll see on the video screen I have a link for an example of an ES-335 that did need a wraparound and I explained fully why we went that route. Okay, next step. If you remember the beginning of the video, there was quite a bit of slop and play in the bridge on the posts. Now the posts actually go into the wood of the top. They're rock solid. Thumb wheel adjustment is good, but the actual inside diameter of those holes was not a perfect match to those posts. There was quite a bit of slop, as you could see earlier in the video, a good 22 thou play. That's taken care of. We put that heat shrink around and got a beautiful press fit. All that movement and slocky machining is taken care of. It's rock solid now. Next, these top three saddles needed to be flipped 180 in order to squeeze the intonation out. The D string, you can see it's right near the back of the casting. I probably could have flipped that one too, but we managed to squeak out the intonation on that one, so I didn't. So the way the guitar came, it wasn't possible to intonate it. Before I go and plug this in in the studio and let you hear just how accurate it is, I just wanted to cover all this stuff. So one of the things about this era, those late 50s Les Pauls, is the actual pickup ring is quite a bit higher than it should be. This is to spec. The edge of this pickup ring is higher than the pickup itself. And when we press that string down, almost touches, but it doesn't. So I did not alter those rings. So moving along, the frets, as you saw earlier, no question about it, this was done with a CNC fret dressing machine, but they did miss a couple of spots, and as you've heard me say numerous times, we took care of that with the tech deck and dressed those spots. Okay, so next, on these guitars, the actual thickness of the plastic binding is quite a bit thinner than the more recent Les Pauls. The little plastic nibs that are on the end are paper thin. So when I was dressing and buffing, I avoided that. No machining along there. You'd burn right through those nibs in a split second. So if you're working on a guitar like this, avoid any machining along the outside edge. So the high spots were leveled, recrowned, buffed to a mirror shine, and let's move up to the compensated nut. And these are the values for the 58 VOS with 11 to 48 strings regulated for E flat, half step down. So let's have a listen. 
for all of you exasperated Les Paul owners that just don't believe it's possible to tune a Les Paul, have a listen to this. This is regulated for E flat tuning 11 to 48 string. <laughs> Okay, next we'll play the seventh fret note and its corresponding octave. Alright, I'm doing something a little bit different this time. I'm arpeggiating a chord, in this case E major 7th. So I'm going to loop that and play the exact same chord an octave higher so you can actually hear how the guitar is regulated from one octave to the next, string to string, fret to fret. So I'll let that play. play the same chord in lower octave. So what I've done there is I've, I've basically played the same chord first position, fifth position, and seventeenth position. This isn't tantalizing to listen to, but I just want you to actually hear the guitar across the entire length of the neck, string to string, fret to fret, chord to chord. So I'm going to do this with three or four chords, and then I'll just loop something I can kind of play over a little bit and switch the pickups around. Let's go to another chord here. So you can hear the initial first position chord arpeggio. Then I'll move to the uh, fourth position, same chord, etc. And then uh, tenth position. Lastly, the sixteenth position. So let this roll. Okay, so we'll try, uh, here's a G-sharp minor 9. So here's just a simple E major chord, first position. So let that, so I've kind of arpeggiated that. I'll do a few more positions, same chord. So the idea here is to illustrate the same chord in different sections of the neck on different strings, different frets, and compare. Are these chords in tune? Have a listen for yourself. So here's our E major.
change to the key of G sharp. G sharp minor 9, C sharp minor 9, and D sharp flat 9. Now I'll switch the pickups around so you can kind of actually hear. So I'm going to let this play this uh, sort of G sharp minor thing and, uh, and then just kind of flick the pickups around and let you have a listen to this guitar.